Um, so the first one is 15 Marketplace. And if everyone can remember the last time they were here was February 16th. This is the new residence. You did the site walk. We had asked him to reach, um, hold on. We had asked him to return. Um, the board stated they were not comfortable with the artistic rendering, do not believe it would look exactly as the drawing. We asked the applicant to come back with drawings with more detail, the edge conditions, headers, gutters, etc. cetera. Um, so he has returned and Mr. Clark, are you uh, ready to present? Uh, yeah, let me get my slideshow up. Um, Claire, sorry. I'm sorry, Claire. No problem. Uh, okay, so yeah, just to recap on what we've provided previously, um, we have our satellite view and site, um, general site conditions, um, neighboring properties that we had put together for um, a presentation to show kind of the appearance of how some of the neighbors are looking and given the, the previous conversations that we've had with the architecture review board um, and the walk that the review board had um, in the neighborhood, they felt that it was a, um, an appropriate design um, for the neighborhood and would fit within the context given the, the various styles within the neighborhood and the development that's gone on there over the past um, several decades and stylistic changes that have occurred there. Um, so I believe the, the primary goal that we wanted to come back and talk to you today were some comments regarding um, the artistic rendering, which um, it, it appeared had some discrepancies in um, how the appearance of that particular rendering was looking versus the, the elevations. We wanted to get clarification on um, how those details were coming together. So we did provide, um, there, there's a slight adjustment to how this gutter system's working. Um, initially, we did wanna do some sort of concealed AEV, but um, we're gonna bring an outboard of the, um, sorry. Hi, Athena, making the presentation. Can you come back in a second? Okay. Sorry. Um, to have an outboard gutter, um, but given the rain screen system we have, it's not gonna protrude. Um, further than approximately one and a half inches beyond the actual um, facade system is finished wood siding. Um, and then our exterior windows are going to have a um, header and framing and jam system that comes and aligns with the outside edge of that wood siding. Um, given that we do have this rain screen and there is a bit of a cavity between the actual uh, waterproofing system and um, the exterior finish of the face of the wood where there is a bit of a buildup there. Um, and we're planning to use that with a space um, between some of the siding to provide a downpipe that will be um, painted to match um, the exterior wood siding tone. So, and it will protrude, uh, this is kind of hard to read because it got a little bit pixelated, but no further than about a half an inch uh, beyond the, the face of the wood siding. So the downpipes, um, where they come down along the facade won't be um, a major visibility. Uh, so in looking at how that appears, we did bring down the windows to match those details, um, showing the gutter system here um, and the down pipes uh, painted to match the wood, concealed, but you know, somewhat visible on, on the facade, but so um, hidden as best possible to maintain kind of the smooth, clean appearance of the home. If there are any comments on that, uh, uh, just just open up the board. one. Yep. If if you color match your gutter to the wood siding, isn't the wood siding gonna it gray is going to gray out? It'll gray out, and then I mean we plan to live in this home for the next several decades, so uh, we'll be maintaining that. But as with any exterior painting, we would have to maintain it, and um, as we would have to maintain the wood and the entire facade system as a as a whole. So it'll all go into uh, building maintenance. So wait, wait, you're gonna adjust the paint color of the gutters? As I, I, that was, that's my plan. As, as the facade <laughs> grays, I'll be adjusting the paint color. I know it's a silly uh, 
thing, but I'll be I'll be the one out there painting it, taking care of it, and maintaining. I'd, I'd rather have it painted to match the the tone of the wood and somewhat blend in with the finish as it fades over time than to to be a major um, visible component to the exterior. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the details certainly make more sense with what the renderings are showing. So I appreciate that. Um, I'm I'm fine with it. Or are you happy with this new revised design? I'm asking Is that a question, question to me. Uh, yeah, I'm very, we're very happy with it. Um, it, it is really a, a revision to the rendering. I think the elevations had shown it, and it, you know it, it is helpful to show the the details that that will make this uh, come to fruition. Mm -hmm. Right, it's more, it's more realistic the, the way it's going to look now. So I also like it. Is that that's the only elevation you 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 uh, corrected, or there were some? That was um, the well the the elevation on the north side is very similar to this um, barring a um, reveal that sets back at the, the patio door. Um, so this was the, the only artistic elevation that we provided, but we did provide the entire um, series of elevations here, this being the front with the door to the right, um, this being the eastern facade, and this is the rear yard facade with that setback. Yeah, no, but, but still very, yeah, very similar to the, the north, the south side. I, I I don't have a problem. I mean, I, I like I like the fact that the, the the header there's a space between the the roof and the window. It's much more realistic and it's 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 much better. I I I like it, so it's it's okay for me. Yeah, the builder likes it a lot more as well. No, I can imagine. <laughs> Um, and, and just a question, because it does actually affect the exterior, but to a minor degree, is um, why do you have a, a ridge vent if you have no intakes uh, with air? Do, do I have ridge vent? No. Nope. Yeah, that needs to, that's gone. Sorry, I missed okay. that on the elevation. No, that should not be there. Sorry. Okay. My apologies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I thought I'd taken out on, on these elevations. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, I'm fine with it. Yeah, that's a that's a yes for me. It looks like you guys, uh, <clears throat> uh, Patrick, uh, responded to what you guys had talked about uh, the last meeting. So, yeah, agreed. Okay. So we're we're good, Daisy. You are muted, Daisy. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. So you're approved. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. Good night. Tina, say good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so our next application is 10 Frog Rock Road. They were actually approved on January 19th. I'm sure you remember this one, Stanley. This is with Tio. <laughs> Um, so give me one second. Let me just get to my minutes. Um, so they were approved. He had proposed and closing the existing breezeway glass connector that connected the main residence, expanding the existing two story, one bedroom garage, adding a gable roof, materials to match existing home, Eastern white cedar shingle. Um, they are returning with a change. And hi to you. How are you? Good evening. I'm doing very well. Thank you, Good. Daisy. Uh, may I share uh, the screen? Yes. Thank you. Um, uh, good evening, board members. The, yeah. um, you were very kind to approve our proposal, and uh, we thank you for that. Uh, we, are, we are here tonight uh, with a small change that uh, was requested by one of the neighbors of the property on the south uh, facing elevation, which is the one that, uh, that was adjusted, which is this elevation here. Uh, in the um, 
approval that, 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 that we had. Uh, th this window was a, a larger window with, um, uh, with a picture window and a, and a casement with a transom. Uh, the, uh, and, and we had windows here in the garage side, which faces uh, our neighbor, uh, the, my client's neighbor. They have uh, requested and my clients have accepted, you know, pending uh, your review to eliminate two of these windows here in the garage uh, and uh, to eliminate the, the larger unit uh, on the second floor, leaving just the transoms in place. Uh, also, they have uh, requested that we provide a trellis design here with, a, uh, with some uh, planting and a planter here. Uh, so this, this is the only change that has been um, proposed at this time and we are asking that you would please consider this uh, uh, approach. The, just to... Do you have the former, the, the one that we approved to compare? Yes, yes, yes we do. Uh, so, so here is the elevation that you will see uh, as it was approved. So we had um, you know, a larger window and just uh, the open balcony here, two windows in the garage. And then uh, in, 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 the, in the new proposal now, uh, if you could memorize that part in there and I will just show you the, the elevation in here, basically the, the larger window has been eliminated, the transom remains, these two windows in the garage removed and there's a planter with a trellis uh, uh, installed. Is, is the neighbor that close that they're bothered by the windows? The, the neighbor is not that close. We are respecting the setback line, but it, um, it has, uh, uh, my clients have agreed to, to do it if, if, if you would approve this proposal. Couldn't the same thing be achieved with frosted or privacy glass? It, they have uh, asked for, for absolute privacy here. That's why we have, um, you know, uh, showing just a transfer at, uh, at this point without the, um, the you know, larger window that we were uh, showing, uh, as, as you can see basically here, that was a proposed. I, uh, I understand uh, that, but the same can be achieved with using glass that you can't see through, right? Yes. Yes, the, 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 the clients have requested that and it, uh, uh, the, the neighbors rather, to my clients. And uh, considering that, uh, you know, this is a side elevation that is not visible to, to any public side and it's only visible to the neighbor. Uh, it, it was accepted that we will propose it this way to you. Right, um, but so that we understand a little bit, uh, the, the neighbor, how, how far is the neighbor and what is, what is he facing? I mean, the, the neighbors, well, their, their house, what, what are they facing? Is it the side yeah, the, the garage? What is it? What, what type of space that there, there is such a big concern on, on even the garage windows, which is a little. And also, what is that space that uh, behind that, that, that bigger window? What is the actual space? Is it the bedroom or what, what is it? It, the, it, it, it is a bedroom, but, but, uh, uh, and we do have plenty of. Uh, Plenty, uh, plenty of, of light, views, ventilation, okay. okay. etc. In, in the back of the property, which is here, and then um, I will show you uh, in here. So, as you can see the, here on the floor plan, they have a large window here okay. that faces the golf course, so they wouldn't be affected by uh, by this change. It's mm -hmm. it's more aesthetics at this point. Um, I'm I'm actually okay okay with it. It's a highly articulated house and and garage, and I don't think it really suffers that much. I actually like the smaller window rather than the huge window on the second floor. Uh, I'm I'm a little a little bit bothered by the lack of the garage windows, but it doesn't. I don't think it's really out of all the windows and articulation around the house. I don't think it's that bad. Um, so I'm I'm okay with it. All right. Then and, and the garage doesn't have any windows now, or is the, do they have? It, no, yes, it does. The, the garage has windows o, o, over the doors, as you can see here in the front elevation. Uh, right. and, 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 and there is also um, a window in the back. So there's a light in the garage. Okay. You know, there are also windows back in here. 
So I don't think that affects anything. And uh, the property, you know, drops down in elevation towards the neighbor. And also next to the garage, there are some, you know, equipment there's and, and some air handlers. So it, it's, it's not the most appealing view, if you will. So my client uh, thought that this was a, a reasonable approach. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Stanley that, you know, we don't need to be too dogmatic about blank facades and fenestration on every single house. And this is one of the examples where it's an interesting enough elevation. I mean, there's quite a lot going on here. I don't think it really suffers too much at all from, from the lack of, of fenestration. So I, I'm in favor of it as well. Anybody else agree? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I guess I, I wanted to understand what is on, on what, what are the neighbors actually facing? What What is their uh, part of the house that they are, uh, you know, is it the, uh, do they have a garage on that side or do you know, or is it just- no, they, 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 they do have um, uh, an outdoor space that uh, yes. apparently the, um, the neighbor likes to meditate and uh, he okay. has uh, requested for privacy. So it's, it's not really that they dislike the elevation. It's more about their, their, their privacy. Right, right, right. No, okay. All right, I guess that's, um, I, I, I also don't object to this change. Thank you. Okay. okay. Could everyone um, comment? Okay. I think so. Uh, okay, so you've been approved. Thank you so much, Daisy. Board members, you have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, so we have returning 73 South Greeley. They were actually approved at the last meeting on the 23rd for Franny's Goodie Shop. Um, I believe Brendan had made some suggestions and um, they've decided to make the sign black. Dan? Hi, everyone. How are you? Good. 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 You? My. Um... My architect isn't able to uh, to make it, so I'll be representing myself uh, tonight. It's his wife's uh, birthday. Go figure, huh? What a jerk. Um, anyway, despite being approved, that was a joke, by the way, despite being approved uh, last week in an effort to appease you guys, I took what you said to heart and I went to uh, my tenant Franny's and I said, hey, what do you think about changing your letters to, uh, to all black? And after a lot of black, back and forth, he, uh, he agreed. Um, so that's, that's the only change, just changing the uh, letters from uh, maroon to black. Dan, but are you, you able to share? Do you need me to share the screen? Yeah, if you could, please, that would be great. Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, tech savvy. Yeah, so that's it, just uh, where it says Franny's Goodie Shop. We just change it from maroon to uh, to uh, black. I mean, I, that'll I be appreciate that. So, so for yeah. me, all good. Yeah, yeah my, my pleasure. And the uh, so that'll be consistent with the Chappaqua building, with um, Bentley, with Mathnasium. And the new tenants that we're signing up will obviously mandate that their uh, letters are black. So, and they'll have, you know, their own uh, pop of color, maybe in, the, in their logo, similar to, you know, Bentley and Mathnasium and Franny's, but uh, we'll mandate that their uh, letters are black as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds great to me. And I think it'll look really good at the end. Cool. Me too. So yeah. that's, uh, that's it. All right, I'm okay with it. Okay, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have yeah. a good Thank night. You. All right. you guys too. Thanks. Okay. So, um, Jerry, we said 20 minutes, and it's been 20 minutes. Uh, so, 15 Heathcote's new residence, and JB Hernandez is here. 
um, Jerry Barrett and Dr. Singh. We're all here for the new residents. JB, will you share your screen? Yes, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, like Daisy said, we have a, uh, oh, just gonna need a, um, this evening we have a uh, Barrett, uh, Mr. Barrett, which is the site engineer that got this uh, project uh, site plan originally approved, and Dr. Singh is as well with us. Um, what we have is a, um, a house, a proposed dwelling, and 15 kid code, and it's uh, off North Bedford Road. Um, it's a 7,000 square foot home. Uh, as you come in, we have a main stair lobby. There's a dining area, a kitchen. We have a, a four-car garage. We have a, a gray room in the back. And there's a bedroom on the lower level, as well as an office. Um, the second floor is a smaller footprint because it has it's the same footprint, but uh, the actual size of the area is smaller because they have a double space open uh, to below. Um, the um, the house is going to be uh, all brick, and uh, the color is going to be uh, white wash. And uh, we have marble windows, white trim, and we are installing uh, Tesla roof panels of black. Um, the garage door is going to be white. We have a balcony in the rear, and uh, this is uh, the rear view of the house. And on the side view, this is the closest side to the neighbor. And through the process of planning, um, some of the windows were eliminated on this side in order to create more privacy. Um, I have a couple of neighborhood homes. This is uh, other houses on the same road. And uh, also, I want to share with you the. Um, sorry. This is an aerial view of the uh, location of the property. We have North Bedford Road here. This is the property that used to be a house at one point. It had been taken down. And this is the, uh, the two closest home in the area. Um, and these are the two houses uh, as well that we took pictures of. Um, Do you, sh you don't show the two houses to the north or the west, I think it is. Um, I couldn't actually find two of the houses on your neighborhood page. These are the, the two houses. Uh, we went up, we drove two of the houses. Uh, I think it's believe it's this house, this one, and two of these houses here. Um, the one that we were able to take better pictures with not so many trees around that. And also I wanna share with you um, the proposed site plan. Um, like I said, this uh, has been approved by the planning board and it kind of it has gone through a long process. If the board has any question, uh, Jerry Barry will be able to help us with that. But as you can tell, there was a lot of work being done to um, create the screening in the front and in the back, um, the same from the side. And um, Again, the house went through a uh, few changes, but this was the final location that uh, kind of had um, input from not only the planning board and uh, consultants and staff from Newcastle, but also from neighbors. Um, JB, Jerry Barrett here. Uh, I'd be happy to share the site plan for the board and just give them a history. It was a quite a long and review and detailed review process with the planning board. And if the ARB would like to hear the highlights of that, I'd be happy to share it. Yes, please. Yeah. JB, can you uh, allow me to share? Yes. Okay. Pop up. Yep. Yes. Yes. 
Okay. So uh, we had gone um, through uh, quite a long planning board process with this. When Dr. Singh bought the property, the property was owned by the previous owner, uh, Tavo Builders. And Tavo Builders had actually had a house approved on the property. And um, that project had a tennis court in the backyard and a swimming pool. Um, when we went back into the board, we explained to them that, you know, Dr. Singh does not want to have a tennis court, does not want to have a swimming pool. And they felt that that would be an improvement, at least from a coverage and land, coverage and land development point of view. So when we got started on the project, um, our initial thought was because Dr. Singh's property includes, we had to, this, this was, um, this was a subdivision, if you will, because this back lot and this front lot were, sub, were separate lots. So the properties had to be merged to make one big lot. The planning board calls that a subdivision, even though it's a merger. So in the back lot is where the septic system is, and, and in the front lot was where the house was going to be. And because we had this deeper lot, um, we, we originally um, proposed the house. The house has gone to, we've been through quite a, quite a review with the planning board. And if you can see this area here, um, the planning board, you know, considered many different locations for the house and the, the house. And, you know, we worked with the planning board and we went through, through the re review process. So, you know, first we had the pre-existing house and then there was the Tavo approved house that I just referred to. Then there was the plan that I came in with Dr. Singh when we first started out where I felt it was best to push it back off of the road because we had the deeper lot. And then we have, you know, the August 28th plan, which is the current plan. So, we labeled these ABC on the plan. And if you, if we look over to the plan, you can get an idea of, you know, the genesis of how we got to where we got to. Um, so the pre-existing house was A. So the existing, the pre-existing house, this was the garage and this was the house. You could see the pre-existing house was closer to the road. It was right here. Um, when Tavo was in and he got his project approved, he was house B. So he was in this area right here which was, so the, the, the front of Tavo's house was at the back of the existing house. When uh, Dr. Singh first approached the planning board with his proposal, we agreed that, you know, because we had the room, let's push it back a little bit and get it off of the road. And we thought that that would be a good thing because we had the room and it would give us more room to landscape in front of the house. And so that was, um, that was house location C and that was here. So you can see here was, here was our house this is the back of the house and the front of our house was was up in this area. So we were back with with house C right in this area here. This was the front of house C. But then through the review process with the planning board and neighbor input, it was decided that house D is the current location. So that that's how the house got to where the house had to be. The other thing is um, this is, a, this is the wetland on the property. There's a big pond on the neighboring property. Then there's a wetland, then there's a hundred foot buffer. So we did everything we could to stay out of the buffer because that's what the planning board wanted us to do. And it required that we put a retaining wall in this area and fill it in. And then we brought a driveway around to load, to load the garage from the side. And, uh, and, and so that's kind of how the house got, you know, distance from the street. That's how it got to here. And the reason it's in this part of the lot because we had to stay away from that yellow line, the wetland buffer. Um, so we went through quite a few renditions um, with the town and, and, and we worked with the neighbor to try to make everyone happy. Um, and one of the resolutions of the whole thing was well, we were gonna put a, a, a very dense hedgerow of plantings in this area between the closest house, which we did. We also put a six foot solid fence that's gonna be painted forest green so it blends with the plantings. And in addition, these red dots you see, these, this represents an area that can never be cleared and it always has to remain as a planted buffer between the two properties. And so that was, was memorialized at the planning board to the extent that the town engineer has required in the resolution of approval that before the foundation gets dug, the town engineer wants the driveway set in, he wants this wall built and he wants all these plantings put in and the fence so to provide a buffer to the neighbors during the construction process. And Dr. Singh has agreed to all of that. Um, and that's in the resolution of approval. So if you look at a section, uh, this is a section coming, this is this section here that you see AA. This is the, neighbor, the, the neighbor's house. Um, he's about 100 and, 
35 feet away from Doc, 130 feet away from Dr. Singh's house. Um, and uh, very similar to what it was in the previously approved plan. And so this would be Dr. Singh's house. This would be the driveway area with the retaining wall. This is an existing hedgerow on the neighbor's property, which are it's a series of Norway spruce trees and they gotta be about 15 feet tall and very dense. In addition to that, we'll be putting in the fence. There's large existing trees that we're gonna retain. There's like a 48 inch tree right in the back, a 48 inch oak, it's right here, that's this. And, um, and then we'll be planting all of, all of the, all the area to create that buffer between the two properties. And, um, and then from the front, you know, if you look at the cross section BB going through the house to the street, you can see that this is the septic area in the back that we talked about. This is where the house falls. We have the driveway, the parking court, we have a low retaining wall. And then it, it steps down to the front area where we're putting our stormwater management area and then our plantings. Um, so that, that's how the site plan kind of got to where it was. It was a, it was a, it was a give and take with the planning board throughout the whole process. Thank you. So from the street, the grade goes up to the house? Correct. Okay. It kind of slopes up, slopes up. We're at grade. We have a little stone wall just you know, to demarcate the front yard. These are kind of customary. And some of these nicer homes, they have the stone wall framing the house, which we think will look nice. Then we have the Caltech rechargers. Then we come in, we got a little, well, we got a little bit of fill here. And, um, and then we're pretty much, you know, the front door is pretty much right at grade. The front drop off is pretty much a grade. You can see the, the, the existing grade is the dash line and the proposed grade is the solid line. So you can see pretty much through the whole way. We only have minor cuts and fills. We're pretty much, it's a, it's, it's a very nice lot. It's the gently rolling, you know, there's no steep slopes or anything like that. And we're trying to keep all this greenery you see. These are all the trees that we're keeping. And most of the trees that have to come out are way in the backyard, and that's to put the sap in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand the site plan. Can we move on to the drawings, the architectural drawings? B, I'll stop this. The uh, stop share if you want to go back to your architectural plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, thank you for the explanation. Welcome. So I, I'm I'm going to jump in and just start off with, um, you know, usually when people present and architects present, I I personally like to appreciate when the plans and the elevations match. And I don't think yours do. Um, or it's hard to read all the ins and outs of on the elevations um, with what I'm seeing in 2D. Have you ever done a 3D? Um, yes. So we can provide a 3D for the board if, uh, if that's, uh, you know, if that's the side, yes. Yeah, that would, that would help us a lot. But I don't think, um, Go up, go go down to another elevation, just like this one right there. So you've got this balcony that looks like it's five inches thick, cantilevering out from the back. I don't know what's supporting that. I don't understand that. And then go down to the next elevation. Okay. You've got railing to the left of the gazebo on the second floor, and I don't quite understand that, to the left of the gazebo. I don't understand that in the plan. Okay. And it's hard to see. It looks like the main roof kind of cantilevers over a lot of ins and outs of balconies and things. And it, it's really hard it, to read on does. your your drawing. It does. So we can uh, do a 3D uh, like we did for the board for the other project that we should just present this so we can do that. So it'd be easier to read the ins and outs and how we prepare to um, do the overhangs and the uh, and do a close up of those details as well. Um, and then going further, are you using um, thin brick veneer or are you using veneer brick? Veneer brick. So real real brick. Yes. Um, and then my just out of curiosity and and I've done some researches. Are you 
dead set on the Tesla roof tiles? Are you convinced that they're not a problem? Uh, so far, you know, the specification, the discussion with our client has been that that's the way we want to go. Uh, if there is any issues that, you know, that we're not aware of with the Tesla roof panels, um, we'd be more than welcome to know about them. But uh, so far, the information that we have had, uh, it seems to be the right uh, route to go on that. All right, um, and then just kind of starting to dive into the, the design, um, you have these gigantic columns um, mm -hmm. with an unknown proportion and style. Where Where is that coming from? That was um, it's something we've been discussing with uh, Dr. Singh. Uh, we can revisit that, but those columns um, where we're trying to show us that, you know, as a support, and we don't want it to be too monumental in the front. So the size of it, we can enlarge a little bit, but the idea is to have, you know, um, it is kind of an eclectic design and we were trying to get these columns to go with the entry as well. But what is the cap? I don't understand what the cap, even just looking at the capital, I don't understand what it's it, made of, what it looks like, it looks, it looks like a tulip. It looks almost Egyptian, but then no. It was more. It, it was meant to be more Corinthian, but uh, we can give you a close up of that as well in a selection, a blow up of that column. Um, and then maybe stepping back a little bit more instead of just diving in on the little details. I I I find the house very oddly proportioned and lacking a lot of hierarchy. Um, on top of not being able to read a lot of the massing of the house. Um, the, oh, stop there, go back to, yeah, go, uh, yep, stop there. The The cantilever on that front portico is immense and you've got these little spindly columns holding that up. Um, I'd love to see it in 3D, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think if you look at the houses on Heathcote, especially the ones you didn't show, there are a lot of you know, ones that are based on colonial, some look like a brick Georgian, as far as I can tell, maybe a little shingle style, you know, something that we can sort of understand and understand proportions, but here you've got three, three gables, the same size, basically, one is off center from the main house. Um, you've got some strange eave details, uh, mm -hmm. like if we take the left gable or the right gable, it looks like a cove molding for the eave, but then it's really reading flat on the sides. Which is it? It is. It is. Uh, it's flat on the side. And, and then you're uh, just cutting the cove profile yeah. as it returns. Yes. Uh, I mean, personally, I just I don't understand why you're doing that. Okay. Um, I think that doing a 3D and giving a blow ups of the detail will go a long ways to. Um, to help you understand what we're trying to do with that with the house. But but you know, even if you did that, if you took this exact thing and, and showed it in 3D and explained what it is, I'm really not convinced by the overall design, partly from a massing perspective, um, a hierarchy, and then you go into the detailing and proportion of of let's say the columns and um you know, some of your windows and what, what's surrounding the windows? Um, it's a wide, wide trim. White, what, is it wood? Is it concrete? Is it stone? No, is it limestone? It's not going to be wood. It's going to be some, um, you know, like apex or some sort of material like that. So that it will um, be some, easier to maintain. What is it going to be? Um, like apex or one of those, you know, materials that can be easier to maintain. What's the it's, uh, it's one of the brands that it can be cementitious board material. And does it have so any it detail or is it just flat? It was flat, the idea is to have this flat. I, 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 think, I think what's disappointing for me is it looks like obviously a lot of time and thought and effort has gone into the site planning and where the house is located and you expect a certain grandeur and, and 
um, uh, quality of design to the house, and I, I'm just not seeing it. I just see a lot of things, mm -hmm. a lot of trim that's just thrown on, like like you have the gable on the left and the right, and then you have this like little pasted on gable with a little half moon window above it. You know, I don't, um, and it's as tall as the entrance gable, uh, or actually taller than the entrance gable. Um, you know, again, that's that's pointing just to one simple thing that bothers me is like there's no, you know, there's no hierarchy. C certainly, uh, you have a two story glass entrance door, but you know, you've got these two huge things on the left and the right. Um, you know, I think there there are a lot of nice houses, nicely well built houses, um, with some thoughtful design, but I'm just not seeing it here. Okay. Uh, you have kind of Venetian railings on the left and the back, but then suddenly you have this filigree metalwork with the spindly little columns on the left and the right. You've got these square windows, which, you know, I'm, I kind of guess you want them high up because you want some privacy, but um, I don't, I don't get it. Um, so one, yes, I'd like to see you explain the house better in terms of massing because your drawings don't tell me anything. Um, but then I think you really need to take a hard look at the overall design um, and just kind of understand how, um, you know, houses should read a certain way. They're, they're, they're just not a collection of big shapes. Well, uh, I think that is, again, uh, let us present it in a different format, because uh, I think that is, um, there is something there, maybe it's missing in the two-dimensional drawing, but um, I would like the opportunity to, uh, I will take those comments that you have, but uh, there is something with the house that um, we discussed with the client and we would like to um, bring forward and uh, I can reduce, you know, reducing the, the gables or creating uh, hierarchy and the, the design a little bit more uh, emphatic, maybe um, it's something where in a 3D drawing uh, coming in and out, it's hard to read sometimes in this 2D drawing, um, the ups ins and out of the design, but um, I, we take in those comments and we will uh, uh, provide you with a, in a, mute, a 3D drawing and uh, uh, take into account all these comments that, uh, um, you just mentioned. Right, I, I may just, uh, I agree with, with Stanley's comments, but I also would, uh, um, what also is ba bothersome a little bit is the uh, graphic presentation because that, um, uh, that represents uh, architectural elements. And, and so for example, you have trim around windows where they are presented like a frame of a, picture rather than a, fr a trim that sits on a sill. There is no horizontal line. Um, the, some of the trims are very thin. Some are, are much thicker. Um, so I don't know if that's, it was just quickly done or, or not finished, but um, basically, um, you know, it, it just, uh, there is no, justification for these changes uh, the, the, these random like very thin trim on the, in the middle then there is much wider then there is no horizontal line there, we don't know if it's a sill so I guess you know a little bit more definition of certain elements even when I, I don't think the 3D uh, is going to it's almost better not to put um, hatch or any kind of, because it, it, it kind of, um, uh, even it's just a line drawing, uh, it, it may convey more information and uh, then, uh, because it just doesn't read very well and, it, and, it, and there is no justification for some of the things we are seeing. Okay. Well, if I may, if I may add it, may I? Uh, if it's anything which is bothering you, uh, which the architect you people, we can improve upon it 
And with the help of Jerry and Jerry Barrett and uh, Mr. Hernandez, we can do it. Whatever is required to to do the needful. We have been working diligently, and we are very flexible. And I'm a psychiatrist; I'm very flexible to it. So, you know, we want to pass through it, and we worked very hard. We've been waiting patiently to get to this point. So, whatever it is, if it's objecting to certain things, we need to be rectified. I'll be more than glad to do so. And no, I, 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 to do so. I, I certainly appreciate all the effort you, going sir. into the Thank site you. planning. I appreciate all the effort going into the site planning and, and just to get to this point. And then I'm really, really, really let down by the aesthetics of the house. It, it again, I mean, just look at the eave, the main eave of the house carries around at the same level everywhere. It doesn't articulate up or down and then you kind of break it with these odd little shapes and I, I don't know it just feels like a color form kind of house you've just taken things and pasted things all over the place i i i, I really think i really think you need to take a fresh look and try to explain what you're doing with the design because i'm not convinced at all and and i'm i'm trying to trying to be um helpful with my comments but it's not a tweaking here and there for me. I think it needs a lot more than that. Like you have so, these little skylights on the gazebo. Why? Um, these little round pancake skylights. I, I don't quite understand that. Um, is that, you know, a lot of times you look up at gazebos and they have beautiful framing to, to, to see up there. Um, or maybe it's sometimes they do have like a completely glazed in cupola or something, or, you know, glazed in cap, but not these little round nautical skylights. I mean, there's just a as lot, there's, said, there's a lot of little as elements. I, as I said, that we, we take the positive concrete uh, critiques from you and we'll work upon it. And so that we can, we can satisfy you. Okay. And as I repeat myself that we are very flexible and we are willing to cooperate with you so that it can pass. Am Thank I you. right, Jerry? Yeah, I, th I think JB and, and Mr. Gabri need to go back to the drawing board and you know kind of readdress some of these things that the board's asking for, and I'm, I'm sure that they can do it. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a it's a grand property. Um, it deserves a Thank nice, you. nicely built and designed house, and I just don't get it. We took, trust me, we put a lot of effort in it to get it the right way and the right things. And I was with Jerry and Jerry Barrett, we discussed wrong thing, and we, we spent a lot of time in, in doing so. But if it's coming as a positive critique, I will work upon it, absolutely, sir, with, with deep respect to you. We will, um, you know, this um, the design of the house. We uh, we will take a fresh look at it and give it a, a, a input of what it needs to be done. We will discuss with Mr. and uh, Dr. Singh, and uh, we will uh, bring her. You know, we will bring a new design to you. Okay, I mean that's okay. That's, I mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I think it definitely needs to be completely overhauled. That's, that's my last comment. Yeah, I, I, just to, to add on to the, the, the comments made, it's just, I, I'm, I'm struggling to find a style for the house. And, and sometimes those, those styles can, can organize the different elements of the house and different things. And, and to tell you the truth, to look at it right now, I couldn't tell you what style the house is. Um, so it, it just sometimes if you if you can start to think about style and those different styles and how they organize different things and how they, you know, to to back up Stanley talking about hierarchy and talking about, you know, the the roofs and the the eave lines and different things. It just it, it seems like it's just struggling to find a style to organize all the different elements that have been added to the the, the composition. So yeah, and just one other thing on top of everything I've said is is just 
some of the elements are so heavy handed. I mean, you've got this 16 inch tall boxy Eve line, and then you've got this, what, 10, 12 foot long cantilever out the front portico. I mean, that just, it just, it just is bad. Um, it's almost like it's fighting itself a little bit to some yeah. degree. Yeah, I think you really, you really need to take a look at sometimes maybe just start from the detail out or, or just. Well, like I said, it was, a lot of time was spent on the site plan and, uh, and Dr. Singh had a, you know, there was a, a house design. So we were trying to um, bring our, you know, our changes that we believe to, should be done to the house and to the style. And we will bring that back to you and you know those comments were taken and uh you know we feel comfortable that we're going to have a um, a house that they will fit with the neighborhood okay thank you thank you and i think it is a positive building sir i'm just telling you and thank you for your views and i want to live and i want to enjoy the house and I, we work along with the jerry very hard and will satisfy the needs. And, you know, anything is welcome for the positive critique and I'm open to it. Okay. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So the next meeting, um, JB and Jared, Tori, um, is April 27th. So if you can get me everything, I will need it all by April 20th to okay. get this on the agenda. So uh, I'll need the, the hard copies and the Come dry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Have a good night. Good okay. This application is assigned for 91 Bedford Road. Um, we have Paige, who is the tenant and the salon owner. I'm going to share my screen. Um, hold on a second. Okay, and Paige. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. So um, I just signed my lease and we've got things going with our building permit. So this is the sign permit for the new sign going on the awning. You can ignore all the like decals on the window, um, but basically it matches the other sign that this same uh, company designed for 91 Bedford, like this sign right here that she's showing is currently on the building. So it's the same material, same color, um, same thickness, same guy that designed the signs. Um, it's a HDU panel, which I don't know what that means, but it's like sun resistant and um, it's not wood, but it's something that's like sun resistant is all that I know. So, I don't know. What is the store? Um, it's a hair salon. Okay. It's yeah. Okay. So I already have a salon in Chappaqua and my sign is a little bit different. So I'm moving into a bigger unit. I currently have a sign with my signature on it. Like she, you're, she's showing right now. And the front of the salon is going to have like, I'm basically running like two separate things in the same unit. Like I have a private salon, so I'm keeping that the same with my signature. And then the front is like my general salon where you could come and like not get seen by me, but get seen by other girls. So that's the, the untied is, is that business. All right, I, I, I like the, the sign. Yep, I like it too. I like it's consistency. Yeah, we intentionally put the un separate from the tied just so it didn't look like United. I wanted it to definitely say like un, untied. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm good with it. Yeah, good. Looks good. Looks, nice. Looks good, yeah. We should have put you first, Paige. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind waiting. It, it was a very intriguing. I've never sat in on one of these, but it's it's very interesting. And uh, I recognize Teo from my boyfriend's house is getting uh, designed by him. So it was just, I've never experienced one of these. It's very, very eye-opening. So thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Okay, our next application is new residence at Old Roaring Brook Road. 
And Greg is on. Good evening, everyone. Nice to see everyone again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you doing, yeah. Stanley? Good. I really enjoyed the, the previous discussion. I'm talking about the applicant before. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Oh, 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 you listened listen to that. <laughs> You were very kind, I have to say. So I, 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 I well, just wait till we, what we say about this one. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Okay. Well, always remember, you're being recorded. Oh, absolutely. I didn't say anything. Uh, I don't think. I think. I think we kept it PG. Okay. So uh, Daisy, I'm going to try to share my screen, but in case I fail, okay. can you just start sharing? Let me just try to share mine. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so I think that, oh, actually, no, that one. So let me share it. Okay, success. Thank you, everyone. So this is a new residence on uh, 22 acres, which is mostly uh, steep hills. This is, the area, this is really the only usable area of that lot. It used to be part of a Durst estate and it backs to old Roaring Brook Road. Um, you know, I'm sure you guys know the location. It doesn't have to, tremendous amount of neighbors or context here because, you know, because the way it's positioned. So we're gonna go to a side point here, a general context. So the area that we are working with is that piece over here and the rest of it is left, uh, in its current state. There is an old Roaring Brook Road. There are no houses on this side of the street. Uh, and uh, I think there is, there's, there's a small house over here somewhere. Oh, actually over here, quite far away. Uh, then there is a colo small colonial over here. And then there is a couple, this is a modern house. We have, uh, we have pictures for those two. That I gave to Daisy. We could not find a picture for this neighbor uh, because you can't see it from the street. Uh, and uh, you know that's pretty much it in terms of a context. So can I move on in terms of a site planning, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. So going back to the site, uh, the residence is uh, quite compact. It's total of about 4,100 square feet with three car garage. It has a 1600 square foot partial basement and uh, the rest is on two levels. Um, you know, it's modern in nature. We'll get into the design specifics. I, do you guys wanna go for the plans or you wanna talk about elevations or should we look at the uh, perspective, uh, at the uh, renderings? What, what's the best? Talk, just talk through the materials on your page okay. right now. Okay, great. So uh, for that, I'll probably go to, I'll just go to the renderings just because it's better represented in 3D. And then we can go back to, uh, okay. where am I? Here, here we go. So let me, let me just find the one which has a, here we go. So this is a, this is approaching up the driveway so as I mentioned, this is quite steep slopes everywhere, except in the area which is kind of uh, more leveled. So we're bringing in driveway uh, along, the, along the road to the plateau. This is a, this is a basic, this is a lower level, which is, which is uh, as I said, semi-basement. Semi and we're using, uh, in this particular case, we're using a dark uh, cement board here, and then we're using uh, wood siding for the rest of the house, basically. That's how, and you know, the upper volumes are defined with, uh, you know, different directions of uh, wood in this case. Um, are you doing a, a rain screen? I, I know we had this discussion on the last house. No, it's not the rain screen, no. No, this so is it, well, down below, so it's cement board just adhered to block or concrete. No, it's actually it's just attached to uh, it's it's attached to uh, OSB. That's okay. all. Yeah. 
in this case. And uh, as you can see, in terms of a design, we're basically dealing with sloping levels here. Uh, and uh, for example, that's probably better shows the relationship between the, the site and the entrance. So portion of a basement is an entrance and you enter through that. Uh, and you get to the first floor, which is a public floor, and then uh, private bedrooms upstairs. I can get into the floor plans very easily. And then we also, because we don't really have a lot of flat land for backyard, although we have a lot of acreage. So we're using uh, the deck to extend to the south, that you know, occupiable area, outdoor area. And we're also using portion, using roof above the garage as extension of the outdoor space. So as you can see right here. Mm -hmm. So in, in this uh, specific uh, situation, you can see the, how we actually, this is a public area. This is a second floor or first floor. Well, I mean, basement in the first floor, that's the second floor. So that's how you access it from the back and from the mm -hmm. side. And here you could see how it, it's accessed um, as well. Let me just, yes, right here, you can see. And this is a south orientation. So we're trying to take advantage of, you know, maximizing natural passive quality of the light and everything else. As I mentioned, all our projects have uh, high insulation, so we're green. So this is, uh, the wall itself is a uh, total of eight inches and has high insulation and we have triple glazing. So we're taking advantage of that. Uh, and the house itself is fairly compact. I'll go to the plans now, if you guys want to see them. Um, sure. Sure, of course. So let me just start at uh, this level. You know, there's a three car garage. This is an entrance. There is a oh, double story here. This is a vestibule and it takes you upstairs. There is also back area with mudroom and storage, et cetera. And there is also multi-purpose room, which we call family room with access outside. Uh, you arrive at this level, there is public areas with a kitchen over here. Again, the double story, it it's opens up above, above the living room, there's a dining room and living and family area, has another guest bedroom and an office right here. Continuing up, uh, it's a master suite and three additional bedrooms. Again, with a double story. Sectionally, I think that uh, you can see what we're doing here. This is, that's what shows a double story here. Mm -hmm. So the house itself is not large, but because we're using, and it's one of the things we do in all our buildings and you guys saw it in the previous house, <laughs> that we use double story to borrow from upstairs to downstairs and create additional continuity of the space. Uh, so I think I'm done. So please ask your questions. What type of wood do you use for the siding? If well, we, we use lard. Back to the uh, either 3Ds or the elevations. Of course, I'll be happy to. Which one would you like to see? I'll, I'll take it. I think it's 3D, 3D easier. Which one would you prefer? Let's do this, right? Yeah, let's. So, yeah, so this is large. Okay. It's stained large. Yeah, it's a hardwood, so primarily used in Scandinavian uh, projects. Is it going to gray out or are you going to keep? No, we actually stain it. Okay. We stain it. We like, we like uh, staining it. Okay. So this is going to look like a cedar type of color or when you say stain, you can stain it any color you want, so. Yeah, it's going to, I, we're going to stay as close to the color that you see in this rendering as possible. Okay. 
So it's going to be, I would, I would call it a light cedar because, in, uh, you know, cedar traditionally is slightly more red. And this is not, I mean, this is kind of a tone that uh, we would like to keep. It would be great to get actually the actual samples, you know, to like see them. Uh, and especially for the color below, because the, the garage door is, what type of garage door is it? And what color is it? I know it's probably similar to what you are representing, but. Correct. So this, so, yeah, so this is just, uh, this is an aluminum garage door. Mm -hmm. And that's dark brown and the, the surrounding is beige. Well, I think that the true color of it, you could see mo more in, uh, let's look at the elevations now because then we don't have any shading, mm -hmm. uh, which affects uh, rendering. So that will give you a really good idea of how we're dealing with this. Uh, so we're looking at the charcoal okay. here and uh, the doors slightly darker than charcoal so you can read them. Mm -hmm. So they read as an element, so they're slightly darker. So it's like a dark gray and an even darker gray. Correct. It's a, it's a dark gray and almost, almost black, but not quite. And the trims of the windows are black? Yes, windows are, in fact, it's called graphite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very, very dark uh, gray. It's not pure black, it's dark gray. Okay, and um, can you show the other elevations also? Sure. Yeah, I like those. One, one quick question, Greg. I, sure. I forgot, did on the, the previous one, was that all, the, the whole roof, was that internally um, drained? No, it actually had gutters on the outside. It did? So yeah. are you gonna- this, this will have gutters as well. We, we tried to do internal gutters and it's a, it's a nightmare. Okay. And I was just going to say the balconies are probably the same way. You're going to have to do something to drain some of those balconies. Yeah. So, so what's going to happen? You're going to have leaders coming out of the side of the roof on a, with a scupper? No, we're actually using, we're using this European method where we use a chain. We allow a chain to actually to have water come down, so it directs it down. But you're going to have a scupper at the roof. Yeah, we'll, there will be. Yeah, if you, yes, there will be. A, we'll, of course, yes, there will be a scupper. I mean, why wouldn't you do a roof drain like many other just commercial buildings? You're talking about external or internal? No, just a roof drain. A couple of roof drains on a flat roof. It's you know very typical. Right, we did that in one of the projects. The problem is you have when you're bringing everything inside the house, yep. and there is an issue with noise, and uh, it, it's also difficult to execute from the standpoint of coordinating the structure. And we just decided that it's a really difficult way to do it. It's not, it's not, it's not really yeah. either cost effective or really doesn't. We just have bad experience with trying to do that. I'm I'm actually okay with the design, but I think you're not showing everything without showing because you're going to have these little holes on the on the parapet, basically, right? Yes, we're going to have certain, but it's. I mean, we can. Um, will it, it has not been designed to this level, frankly. There will be minor holes, or there might be. Uh, yeah, probably, or we might do something where we actually have a vertical slot. Uh, instead yeah, of but it would, it would change the look of the house when you have these, because the chain can't be that close to the wood. It's got to be a certain distance from the house. Yeah, yeah, it wood. does, of course, yeah. yeah it has so to I think, I distance. think, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, as I said on the last submission, the other previous um, uh, house tonight, I think you have to depict it pretty much like it's going to look, but I overall like the house the way it is, but Thank you. I would, I would like to see it with all the details that are going to change the overall look of the house and certainly uh, chain gutters and, and 
and scuppers coming out are going to change the look of the house. So I'd like to see that. Sure, no problem. We'll, we'll do that. And then, and maybe to Claudia's point is maybe either, you know, have real photographs of the graphite charcoal cement board and the large that you're using and, you know, just okay. some, some depiction of the materials rather than the rendering of the real materials. We can act, we actually have a house that we're just finishing in uh, Western Connecticut, which has similar coloring scheme. And that we have, I have pictures of that. I can forward it to Daisy. Yeah, that would be great. You guys will be able to see it. Same materials? Yeah, we're using exactly the same materials. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Okay. Daisy, I'll send you the pictures if that's okay. So we're okay. asking him to return for the 27th. And Stanley, to your point, so you, how would you, and because the scale here is quite, you know, it's not, there is a challenge of scale. Do you just, you just want us to, in this scale, just to add the detail vis-a-vis uh, -vis gutter or? Well, well, the chain, you know, the chain's going to hang eight inches away from the house. So there's going to be something, there's a scupper coming out from the parapet with the chain hanging down from it. Okay. it I'm not going to say it's going to look bad, but it's going to certainly look different than what you're showing here. I'm not disagreeing with you. I just so want to stabilize that chain coming from that roof all the way down in the wind. <laughs> yeah. No, those yeah. chains are actually be quite, tough. quite heavy, but. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> So are power lines too. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Well, um, so, but my question was about the scale. So you're okay as basically making adjustments and just further detailing at this scale, correct? Yes, but but for the for the fact uh, of what you're showing, I mean, it would help to have just a little detail of what that. Oh, we can do the detail, of course. We can do the section also. Yeah, I think we'll do the blow up detail. No problem. Okay. You can, you can detail it, but you can also represent it on the scale. It's going to. Oh be no, we will. Small, yeah. It will, sure. it will look more realistic. I mean, the way it's going to be. And can we just move to the other elevation again? For I just have a question. Of course. Yes. Yeah, that one. So what is what is on that um, right elevation behind that wall? What is this? Right here. Yeah. Well, what is the 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 space behind? Those are the bedrooms. Oh, the bedrooms. Okay. Okay. I'm not, I'm not so bothered by the blank blank. No, no, me, me neither, because there's a lot of yeah, you can have some walls. <laughs> it's just Thank a, you. no, it doesn't have to be all windows. But I was just curious if there was any, you know, like bedroom with the okay. uh, you have yeah. No, it looks it looks good. Yeah, a little bit more detail will be helpful for everyone. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. you I, we will do a detail. We will do the uh, we'll update the elevations with the scoppers, and uh, I will send the sample of the house that we build, which shows all those elements together. Actually, yeah, to, take take them take them from a distance. You see the whole house, and then also close ups of the of the materials. No and problem. I think the, those three things would, would help us a lot, and I think you're almost there. Looks good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, Greg. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Daisy. Okay, Greg. So if you can just get me everything by the 20th, then we can put you on the agenda for the 27th. Appreciate it. Thank you very All much. Right. Thanks, Have a good night, everyone. Okay, bye bye. Good night. The successful meeting. <laughs> uh, so our next meeting is on the 27th.